Cheers. <laughs> it kind of tastes like, uh, uh, I get gas, gas station? Gasoline. Yeah. Um. My black rifle coffee just came in. I've never had it before. Oh, let me, let me turn that around. And I found out about this because of an article that I read in the New York Times. It smells pretty good. So what's the deal with black rifle coffee? Well, in essence, they're a coffee company that's marketing to people based on their politics. Nike was the first company, at least that I know of, that really picked a side when it came to politics and selling. With companies in the past, they never do that. The previously held taboo of crossing commercialism with politics may well be gone. I wrote that down in my notes for this episode and I have no idea <laughs> what the source is. And they are selling their coffee, which is a food product, to people based on their politics. Notice if you were to pause the video, the description here says nothing about the coffee itself. Or in this case, their freedom roast coffee. Freedom isn't free. That is the description of this coffee. But what I do find interesting is that a coffee company, which would normally be talking about the freshness, the quality, the taste, the humane sourcing of their coffee beans, all is sort of second banana. What matters in this case is that thing, the gun. I thought it would be interesting to compare this coffee to a coffee that's traditionally more on the left. Actually, this is my right hand, so the left, which is Starbucks. Which tastes better? Let's stop over at Starbucks and actually pick up some of their own coffee. Where are we, Joe? A Starbucks. And what do you love? Nothing. Oh. Know us some ways. I'm appropriating some yeah, more. So we just need the plain regular one. I don't know which is the regular. One citrus chocolate, sweet dark chocolate. Just the regular. Whatever the regular There's coffee. There's no regular. What do you mean there's no regular? Alright, got the Starbucks. We got the black rifle coffee. And now we're going to go to Sacred. All right, we're at Sacred Coffee in Princeton, New Jersey. Across the street from the school, across the street from the seminary, and they are busy today, but we're here to compare Starbucks versus Black Rifle Coffee along with the artisan coffee that they make themselves. So there's Annie right there walking past us, the manager. Hi. We're having lunch and it's not from Sacred. <laughs> and then Zachariah is back there who's gonna be our barista. We're gonna do a real coffee tasting and see, does Black Rifle Coffee actually taste good? Does Starbucks actually taste good? Which is better? And are they actually good coffees to begin with? All right, so three different coffees, supposedly all medium roasts. As you can see, that might be an exaggeration. Right over here, we've got the Sacred. I think we're using our Panamanian Geisha. And look at the, it's got like a really rich brown color to it, like a really nice chocolate. Right here, we have the Starbucks, which kind of, it's, it's, uh, it's dark. It's very dark, I would say. Um, and then we have the Black Rifle, which looks like a decaf roast. Uh, we roast our decaf. Basically how you get it is you burn the crap out of it. That burns out the caffeine. That's kind of what the Black Rifle regular medium roast looks like. It looks kind of oily. Very, very noticeable sheen on the coffee, which you don't really see on any of the other, the, uh, our Panamanian Geisha. I'm intrigued how it's gonna taste, but uh, you know, one, only one way to find out, right? So we put the beans on the table and soon we're gonna give them a try, but it's so funny because they're all medium roast and yet the color difference is just so great. This is the Black Rifle coffee. It's so dark and oily. Oily, and then we have the Starbucks in the middle, which is a little bit less dark. Finally, we have the medium roast from Sacred, which is a nice shade of brown as opposed to being black. When we opened the bag, we could immediately tell the difference between the Black Rifle, their local coffee, and the Starbucks. The smell is just so noticeable and so strong that really anyone can tell. 
So that's our geisha, what we ground it in. Or, yeah, yeah, what we ground the geisha in. This is what we ground the Starbucks in, so this is what's left in the Starbucks. There's some, there's some oils there, and this is the black rifle, which as you can see is mostly stuck into the cup, and I had to tap it several times to just get even that much off. So what does that mean, that the black rifle has more oil in it? Uh, it probably means it's overcooked. Or coffees that we're making right now. This is the geisha, this is the Starbucks, and finally we have the black rifle coffee here. And the idea is we're going to do a blind taste of them to see what the difference is, but it's crazy that even looking at the cups you can see there's such a difference with the grounds that stick to the inside of the cup. So first difference we can already tell. So this is a black rifle and um, smell from here. Yeah, it's like charcoal brisket, biscuits, what are Br they uh, briquettes. Briquettes, yeah. charcoal briquettes. Oh, That's gosh. what it smells like. Super, super ashy. Very yeah, ash. That's the tasting note that yeah. I think we're gonna get the most of. Ash. <laughs> Good. Which is a uh, on the wheel of tasting notes. Uh, is it a tasting note? So look, there it counts, go. man. It yeah. counts. It looks okay though, in terms of you know looks. It looks like coffee. <laughs> this is coffee A. No, we'll name it after all the different strains of COVID. <laughs> yeah, Delta seriously. here. Delta, Alpha, and Alpha here. Whatever the other one yeah. is. We're gonna see what these taste like. We have a, one of our own coffees from Sacred, which I'm pretty much gonna guarantee is the best one, but uh, you know, not that I'm biased or anything. And uh, one from Black Rifle, one from Starbucks. We'll see uh, if we can get some tasting notes and uh, see what they taste like. We have coffee A, B, and C. We don't know what they are. We'll probably figure it out pretty yeah. quick, but uh, we'll find out, won't we? Yeah, so coffee A, right, shall we? Right. Cheers. Um, wow, I, I don't super like that. It kind of tastes like uh, I get gas gas station. Gasoline. Yeah. Um, all coffee is good. Not all coffee is created equal. This coffee doesn't taste great. Bitter is, there's a lot of bitterness. Yeah. It just tastes dark. Like it just tastes like darkness. Like yeah. how exactly like what a charcoal looks like. That's kind of like what I'm tasting. That's the main tasting note I would say is probably charcoal. There's like a chocolate note in there somewhere. So I assume it came from South America, but again, it's pretty well buried. Got to cleanse the palate between tastings. I'm getting water notes. Uh, seltzer. <laughs> Metal. All right, so coffee B. Let's do it, man. It smells better. This one is not as bad as I thought it was. It tastes kind of like the diner coffee. I'm get, yeah, I'm getting that. That bitterness is still for sure there. But again, like that kind of diner coffee of an old 50s diner that you walk in, yeah. haven't cleaned the machine, it tastes great. Yeah. I'm getting some of that as well. So there is, in roasting, when you drop the beans in to the fully heated machine, the temperature will drop, and then it'll go back up, and it'll scale down. And at some point, you'll hear with your ears in the machine, them popping. It's called the first crack of the bean. And so you're listening for that. And in specialty coffee, what you really want is to hit that first crack and then go a little past that, depending on light, medium, and dark, and then drop the beans out before the second crack. Now the second crack is generally where most roasters that we're familiar with, Pete's, Starbucks, a lot of those bigger companies, that's what they roast to because it's safe to ship every single time. But it doesn't taste good because the second crack in specialty coffee terms, it's burnt and you throw it away. Last one. I'm very excited about this one because I'm pretty sure I know which one it is because there's only three coffees in front of me. Noticeably different than the others because rather than just getting roasted notes, right. I'm able to actually smell fruitiness. Oh man. That's, That's really, good. really good. This is doing really well. Very, there's yeah. A noticeable blueberry. Very I noticeable blueberry. A little bit of jasmine notes in there. Yeah. Lemongrass. These two, yeah. it was almost hard to get three tasting notes out. Yeah. With this, I feel like I've listed six or seven. Yeah, I'm just gonna go one, and then two, and then three. This just tasted like charcoal. Yeah. This at least had some flavor, even though it definitely tasted burnt. Yeah. And this is just light years ahead. It's a completely different coffee. It's almost hard to say that these are the same products, but I mean, yeah. it's like a Wagyu steak versus a McDonald's hamburger. Although I like McDonald's hamburger. I mean, I do I love McDonald's. I like this so much. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. like that as much. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I put the seltzer water <laughs> ahead <laughs> of those two. Yep. Surprise, sacred, Gucci, yep. obviously. I don't want to spill it. That is the Starbucks. And, and finally, so, well, you know, obviously. Well, we know yeah, it's, there's only three. So this is the black rifle. Yeah. I'm not crazy. That is the black rifle. <laughs> so 
We guessed Fix right. it in post, right? <laughs> yeah, fix it in post. Right off the nose, you can immediately tell this one smells like blueberries, this one smells like charcoal. Yeah. One of the reasons that I started drinking espresso, that I started drinking brewed coffee and not putting any milk in, is because so many hands go into putting that coffee in your cup. From the farmers who are making it, to the people that are picking it, drying it, importing it, roasting it, then brewing it right in front of you as a barista. So much work goes into putting that coffee, that specialty really well done coffee, into your cup that I don't want to make any dilutions, I don't want to do anything to it. You know, it's funny, they actually have tasting notes on the back. Cocoa, vanilla, aroma, bold tasting notes, smooth, buttery finish. Yikes. All right, let's go. That was a lot of fun. Hey, so we just finished at Sacred. We're leaving just in time. They locked up their store and we tried all of the different coffees. Black Rifle Coffee, it's just the branding. It's just the marketing. The taste, not so good. <laughs> not so good, which is too bad. I was kind of hoping that they would be the best because I think their marketing is kind of, kind of fun and clever and I like the fact that they give money and coffee to veterans, but uh, well, it could just also be that one coffee blend we got. That's true. They do have a bunch of different coffee blends. That was just one of them. Uh, although that was the medium and it was so, so dark. It was, it wasn't like a medium. I was just fascinated by the idea of a coffee company selling coffee that really doesn't matter when it comes to taste. It's more about the marketing and uh, comparing it to a coffee company that's more traditionally seen on the left with a coffee company that's on the right. And I think Starbucks won, but not by much. Local places definitely win. I think that was the best coffee I have ever had. The Black Rifle? No, from Sacred. <laughs> so thank you to Sacred once again for allowing me to come film. I think that video was a lot of fun. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos about food, travel, and perspectives, feel free to go ahead and subscribe. So that's it for tasting the Black Rifle and Starbucks coffee and seeing which one is better. But all of this made me think of a story, a time that I was in Japan, and I'll tell you about it in just a minute. The thing is about Japan is you feel very isolated. You feel very alone and I was on the bullet train studying Japanese, writing out words and copying them again and again. I remember distinctly that the train made a stop at one of the stations and a Japanese businessman got up and as he was getting off the train, looked down at what I was writing and he recognized that one of the words that I was copying was wrong. Unfortunately, he was nice enough to tell me. It's such a simple thing, but it had such a big impact on me that this man took his time and his energy to learn enough of my language and my perspective for him to be able to help me understand better his perspective and his language. It made me realize that kindness is everywhere, but in order to manifest itself, you need to be understood by others and you need to be able to understand others yourself. Without him speaking English, without me trying to speak Japanese, there would have never been that small but beautiful moment of genuine kindness. And what could possibly be more important than that Nothing. Coming back to this coffee video, you have two coffee companies that are marketing to two radically different audiences. Audiences that are becoming more distant, more foreign to each other. Just maybe, if you're on the left, you'll learn a little bit more about the right by trying Black Rifle Coffee. And maybe if you're on the right, you'll learn a little bit more about the left if you'll drink some Starbucks. And from that, who knows, maybe you'll actually have a conversation with the other over coffee sometime. And in that, maybe we'll understand each other better. Maybe there's kindness to be found in just an ordinary cup of coffee. See you next week, guys.